السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھری برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور وی فنشڈ آور ڈسکشن ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر آن دا ڈیفینیشن آف دا برانڈ مینجمنٹ پروسیس اینڈ وی ڈسکس تھنگس لائک اٹ از ٹرننگ آف اے پروڈکٹ ان ٹو اے برانڈ یو گیو دا برانڈ نیم میننگ اینڈ دین یو نیڈ مینجمنٹ سپورٹ in order to sustain the brand and if the brand has the management support meaning the requisite management support it starts turning into a profitable entity and uh, the profits uh, give company the value and value translates into a good brand equity these are the important elements or the component of the brand management definition which we discussed last time and just to recap For the sake of consistency into lecture number three, meaning the present lecture, I would like to say a few words on all these components all over again. When I say turning the product into brand, what it means is that you give meaning to the product. You give meaning to the product by creating some differentiated features and you like to communicate about those differentiated features to your target market. Once you start doing that, And if the target market is in a mood, meaning if they do acknowledge and recognize the differentiated features, it means that your product has made the mark, it is well positioned into the mind of the target market, and therefore you have been successful in giving the product meaning, and product has turned into a brand. Once the product has turned into a brand, the next step is to give it management support. When I talk about management support, what I mean is when you introduce a brand or try to sustain a brand which exists on the market, you have to make sure or the companies have to make sure that all the opposing and conflicting views about brand and brand management are resolved. Although the 100% consensus may not be reached, but the objective is to bring different perspectives together, match those perspectives and reach the best possible decision. Once you have succeeded in getting the management support, you are on your way to managing the brand well. And when you do that, you make the brand profitable. That's the basic objective. When the brand is profitable, it brings value to the company and the value can be translated into financial terms, which eventually leads to brand equity. And that's what the whole game of brand management is all about. Having said that, it becomes very essential and very obvious that managing the brand right is the basic objective of brand managers. To be able to do that, we have to understand brands in all their complexities and in all their shades and forms. All brands, regardless of the categories, whether they fall into consumer products, consumables or durables or the fall into industrial goods, they all have certain fundamentals which are all common to all the brands in all categories. What are those fundamentals? Let us talk about those one by one. Basically, there are four fundamentals. Brands have dimensions to them. Brands have certain characteristics and the set of characteristics are pretty much common among all the brands, like I said earlier. And then brands have certain layers, meaning when you introduce brands or manage brands, it may not be just one brand. It could be a combination of different brands. It could be a family or it could be a mix of brands. Um, if, if the company is dealing with just one product line, you are dealing with just one family of brands. If company is dealing in more than one product line, which means that you are dealing with product mix, then you have two families of brands and uh, as brand managers, you have to discern the situation correctly. How should you go about the process as far as the naming of the brands is concerned, as far as putting those brands into different lines is concerned? So this is an important fundamental which is common to all brands and we should be talking about all these layers And, and brand extensions like the say in, in later lectures 
Uh, but like I pointed out earlier, we are talking about the building blocks, which are absolutely essential for us to understand how the process is going to build up uh, through the stages. Number four fundamental of brands is brand owner's commitment. Now, brand owners are top management. It is one and the same thing. Uh, people who own the brand have got to stay committed to the brands they are fostering, they are developing and growing. Let's talk about these fundamentals the one by one. First of all, brand dimensions. There are three models at the heart of brand dimensions, and they are brand identity, brand image, and communication. They're very, very important in the sense that we should be talking about all these all along the course, and until the time we really have a very clear understanding of these three models, we cannot really appreciate what is going to come later. Brand identity is what the manufacturers or the brand managers or the companies for that matter transmit to the marketplace. And what they transmit to the marketplace form brand's personality in the form of name, the logo, colors, uh, the typeface, and all other manifestations which are there for the consumers to see. The idea and the objective is to project the brand identity in a way that it is taken at the receiving end in the way the company is projecting or the company is wanting the target market to perceive. So, identity of the brand is something which takes place at the company's end and it is transmitted for the purpose of it being received at the other end, which is the marketplace. What is of absolute importance is that brand identity has to be created right. And brand identity is created right only if brand managers understand the brand very accurately. What does that mean? What it means is that the moment the brand architecture starts, meaning at the conception, conception stage, the brand managers have got to be very clear about the need which the brand fulfills. Remember this thing, that it is all about fulfillment of need or needs that brands are all about. And this forms the basis of all the activities within the area of brand management. So if the brand architecture is right, if the product is conceived right, it is named right, the chances are the identity which is given to it by the creators of the product is right, and if that is right, it will be taken right at the reception end. The second model of brand dimensions is the brand image. Brand image is again something which we shall be talking about as a denominator to so many variables within the area of brand management. Image, after having talked about brand identity, it becomes quite clear, I think, that image is something which takes place at the receiving end, meaning it is formed by the marketplace, meaning the target market. You have tried to project the brand identity in the rightmost way, it is now up to the marketplace to draw their perceptions and draw their images. And again, it goes without saying, if identity is communicated right, the image which is going to come up in the minds of the consumers is going to be right. So, image which is being formed at the other end is a very, very important byproduct of the identity with which we have created. Image is not something which is developed overnight. It is not something which is created abruptly. It is something which the target market has been taking and receiving for a long period of time. And the medium which conveys that, which carries that, is what we call communication. 
Communication is the third model which is at the heart of brand dimensions. But before jumping on to communications, let us talk a little more about the brand image. The reason I was talking about a brand image not coming into shape overnight, rather taking a long time, is that it is an effort which takes brand managers and marketers years and years to develop. People do not register things overnight. Whatever you want to convey has got to be hammered in again and again, again and again, so that people do not forget that, so that people remember that. So in other words, it is a lot of experiences, a lot of observations that people have been generating in their minds and then absorbing those through a psychological process, which is very natural. There will be certain things which will be remembered and there will be certain things which will be forgotten. It is a process of filtration. Uh, like in everyday life, there is not everything that we can remember. There are certain things which we retain and there are certain things which we cannot retain and those are automatically, naturally rejected. So image also, by the same token, is the same thing. It is kind of a set of experiences or a sum total of experiences which consumers have been accumulating in their minds over a long time on the basis of the perceptions they've been having, on the basis of the biases they've been having, meaning likes and dislikes, on the basis of certain beliefs and norms and their social values that they've been having. So in other words, this accumulation of experiences keep on modifying itself uh, because of the changing perceptions or the kind of perceptions and, uh, and even values and beliefs, you know, which, which keeps changing with the passage of time. So it is something, you know, which is modified by a set of perceptions, beliefs, social norms, and a host of other variables uh, which affect that. And do not forget that the element of forgetfulness is one of the elements or one of the components which really affects the image process. Because as we go through this accumulation or the heaps of information that we have in our minds, we also forget. And because of the forgetfulness, messages do get distorted. So the image that you have in your mind is the, the net net result of all the experiences modified by the variables which I've talked about. So therefore, it is not easy to say, uh, let us try to change the image if the brand is in distress. That is why I've tried to talk about the image factor in a little detail, and I shall be talking about this thing a lot more in detail in one of the later lectures, because this is going to form the very basic of the brand, brand management philosophy. So, coming back to changing the image, whenever laymen or people in the company who are not really conversant with uh, the technical marketing aspects do talk about changing the image, the answer is it cannot be changed overnight. Uh, because, you know, image is the, the sum total of experiences and experiences, you know, uh, keep uh, getting modified uh, because of the variables I enumerated. We have to analyze our own experiences or one's own experiences um, when one starts thinking in terms of changing the brand image. And therefore, it becomes kind of an analysis, a collective analysis of all the experiences of the total target market when you are out there to change the image. The question is, how do you do that? You do that with the help of market research. Uh, market research is the, where the answer lies. Uh, those of you who already have done a course on market research are going to appreciate this concept mu much better than those who have not done it. Let me, for the benefit of all of you, state the definition um, in very simple terms of market research. I will not be stating uh, the definition in exact technical terminology uh, because that's not the intention here. The objective is to tell you what the research is all about. 
Uh, research basically deals with collection and analysis of data so that you can analyze it and then tabulate it with a hypothesis in place which tells you what is it that you are going to analyze uh, so that you can arrive at the rightmost conclusion. And when you arrive at the rightmost conclusion, you are in a much better shape. You are much better armed with effects and figures to make a better decision if a change is needed in the brand. We were talking about bringing about a change in the image and they started talking about the collective experiences and the need for carrying out an analysis of the collective experiences and then using market research as a tool and uh, then reaching the conclusion that uh, changing the image is not all that easy. You know, it takes uh, quite a bit, bit before you can uh, even decide which direction you have to follow. And if you have to follow a new direction, it means that it is an evolution and uh, or it is a kind of fixing a problem. You are changing a lot of things in order to bring about enthusiasm and in order to bring about sanity into the approach you're going to follow for the new, new course. So brand image, therefore, is not something which can be changed very speedily or you know, as speedily as you change a color. It takes a lot. What does it take that uh, you require in order to uh, get the change the image? The changes may be required in the area of technology. The changes may be required in the area of you know, product design. The changes may be required in the area of distribution or in the area of logistics. Why? Uh, let me talk about these the one by one, though very briefly. Technology, because you may not be keeping pace with the market, and uh, you might follow your technology getting kind of uh, outdated. Uh, if not outdated, then maybe you know, it is just at par with, uh, with that of competitors, and therefore you feel a need to revitalize it um, in order to maintain your point of differentiation. Because uh, brand management is all about uh, the differentiation. If you cannot prove that to uh, the point of difference, people are not going to acknowledge your product as a differentiated product, and therefore the whole exercise of brand management becomes self-defeating. Product design. But maybe the technology is right, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but still you have to uh, bring about some kind of a change um, in the product design. It is uh, not very contemporary, for example. Uh, you might like to change uh, its colors. Uh, you might like to change uh, the typeface. Uh, and when you're doing that, you are uh, changing the personality a little bit. And if you're doing that, you have to do that very carefully so that there are no distortions when you convey that changed um, personality of the brand. The change could be in the area of distribution, for example. Uh, maybe you have to expand your distribution. The coverage is not the 100%. Uh, like they say, there always is room at the top. Even if you think your distribution is okay, maybe you still have to bring about further improvements because you want to outpace competition. You may like to have more distributors or maybe you, you may like to have uh, uh, distribution more intensive by having the same number of distributors. When I say intensive, what I mean is the areas which are being covered by the distributors or the areas under distribution could have to be made uh, more intense in terms of their combing, in terms of making the product available, and so on and so forth. A change or an improvement uh, may also be needed in the area of uh, logistics, for example. Um, the distribution is right, the product design is right, and um, the technology is fine, but you need to uh, bring about certain changes in logistics. Uh, you are not really carrying your goods to the marketplace with the frequency the, the market uh, requires. Um, this is um, a moot point, and this is a point to see uh, where uh, the company management and uh, the trade members, meaning distributors and retailers, do have you know conflicting views because they always talk with each other from their vantage point. Uh, the 
trade members like to have the the goods you know as frequently as possible so that the involvement of money or the cash flows is at the minimal level and the companies like to uh, deliver to the marketplace with as less frequency as possible of course not compromising the basic principles of distribution and of course not compromising the availability of their product uh, not at the cost of their relationship with uh, the members of the trade and not to see at the cost of their own brand uh, but my point is that uh, this is uh, the one of those areas which uh, the might uh, invite your primary and fundamental attention in terms of bringing about a change and hence improvement. After having talked about identity and image and uh, a full of hope that we have developed a clear understanding regarding what identity is and what image is, we now, that brings us to model three, which is communication. We have developed understanding that identity is company end and create and image is created the market end. और आइडेंटिटी जो क्रिएट की जाती है वो इस तरीके से क्रिएट की जाती है इन 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 द राइट मोस्ट वे ताकि उसका जो इमेज है जो ब्रांड मैनेजमेंट वाले प्रोजेक्ट करना चाह रहे हैं उसी तरीके से वो इमेज क्रिएट हो और जो कंज्यूमर्स हैं वो उसी टाइप का इमेज जो है अपने ज़हन में वो क्रिएट करें और अगर वो उस तरह के इमेज क्रिएट कर लेते हैं it obviously means, I mean, it goes without saying that brand management has succeeded in creating an, an identity where which is just about the right most. Is fact, we are talking about the third model, which is communication. Ka. Communication is a medium which is through brand identity company end to market end. Ki taraf communicate ki jati hai. Ye wo medium which is the medium which is the communication. Hai. So, therefore, it becomes very important. And communication, as you all know, may take many forms. It could be in advertising, it could be promotions, it could be, you know, just the brand itself sitting on the retail shelves. Uh, the communication takes place in the verbal way and communication takes place in the non-verbal way. Uh, the verbal communication is all about advertising and uh, also promotions. And non-verbal is, uh, you know, when you see the product and it looks into your eyes, it still talks and you develop certain images, you develop certain perceptions, and on the basis of those, you make certain decisions. Uh, the whole concept of identity, and then communication, and then image, although we talked about identity first, and then the market and image second, and now we're going to talk about communication, or rather we are talking about communication as number three, uh, but this is something, you know, which is in between, and we have to have an understanding so that so we can complete the model. Uh, this is a good understanding of what can be done in this way, especially in this way, which I have talked about earlier, that this is an accumulation of experiences that are in your mind, and those experiences have many variables and variables that are affected by them, which are your likes, hai, dislikes, hai, biases, hai, perceptions, hai, social values, hai, norms, and many thought ways that are affected by them, and then there are some elements hai, जो आप भूल भी जाते हैं जब भूल जाते हैं तो एक उसका एक नेट जो तस्वीर ये एक मजमुआ आपके सामने आता है वो एक इमेज होता है और वो है जो उसके ज़हन में होता है और आपको उसके साथ कम्युनिकेट करना है और करते जाना है कि यू हैव टू कम्युनिकेट टू सी इफ नॉट ऑल द टाइम से वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली सो दैट दोस डिस्टॉर्शन और वट एवर यू सी इज द नेट रिजल्ट इन द माइंड ऑफ द कंज्यूमर्स इट स्टेज देयर and it stays there, you see, in its strongest possible form, the way you want. And uh, not only that, rather you, you can further reinforce that, you, 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 you can further strengthen that. So that is the part communication plays. Now let us uh, take a look at um, a, a graphical presentation for a better understanding. Aap ye dekh rahe hain ke sender, sender is the company or the brand managers which we see at the leftmost end. And that is what we call in you know, the brand identity. Uh, the second step, which I already have explained, is brand um, signals through transmission. And this is, you know, the what is what is communication. Uh, this transmission 
is going right to the marketplace where the brand image is being created. And it is cre being created in the minds of the receivers. Who are the receivers? The receivers are the consumers. And who are the consumers? Don't forget that. Consumers are the people who form your target market. It is very important. It is not meant for everybody and anybody. Um, if uh, you can, you know, create more consumers through everybody and anybody, there's no harm in that. But uh, when I talk about receivers, it essentially means people in, who form your target audience or the target market. Another factor um, which I didn't really neither talk about uh, in my um, you know, previous uh, discussion with you is uh, the, the uh, competitive factor. You can see at this graphical presentation the red box the underneath uh, which talks about competition. Um, it is the competition which is creating a lot of noise and uh, the competitive noise or the market noise are the terminologies which you will be uh, hearing a lot through the marketing courses and this is we call it noise because it disturbs us. It disturbs the transmission which is taking place between the sender and the receiver, as you can see at the slide. You are conveying your identity. You are wanting to create um, a certain projection uh, intended for a certain image in the minds of the consumers. And don't forget, competitors also have the same objective. I mean, they're also in the market. They're also uh, the players uh, on the same uh, the playing ground. So they have to get play their part. When they do that, they create what we call distortions because their transmission intersects ours. And when that happens, the net result is the distortions which I talked about earlier. How do you fix those distortions? You fix those distortions by talking or by communicating in the right most manner with your target market. And talking rightly or talking accurately means that you have to talk in a very clear, in a very explicit and succinct manner about the differentiated features um, relating your product. That's what uh, brand management is all about. And um, when you do that, what is happening is that you're talking about just about the rightmost aspects or the features and attributes or benefits of the product with the rightmost people. And when you have ensured that, the chances are you are lessening the distortions. And uh, the chances are your target market is going to retain uh, most of you know, what you have said. This implies that communication has got to be right. And the answer lies in communicating the rightmost things with your target market. Uh, communication will be right only if you understand your brand right. And you will understand your brand right only if you understand the brand architecture. Brand architecture, like I talked earlier, starts with the conception stage. And uh, if the brand is conceived right, uh, the chances are the communication will also be right. Uh, what is meant by uh, conception and what is meant by uh, if the brand is created right? This boils down to identifying the rightmost need which exists in the marketplace. If you are in a position to identify the right need which needs to be addressed and which needs to be fulfilled, only then you can come up with the right brand. And if you have the right brand based on the right need fulfillment, um, you will be moving ahead with um, all the things which are in their rightmost perspective. When it comes to need, uh, like a marketing guru stated, ask yourself the one question. What would have market done if our brand did not exist? If the answer is, they would have run into some problem then you have identified the need rightly. The brand has got to be created with the speed of lightning. No question about that. If the answer is, well, the market will not suffer or the market will not care, 
uh, then you should not go ahead with creating your brand. So that is why I said uh, the identifying of the need is very essential. It is very primary and fundamental in nature. And then fulfillment through different stages follows. Um, the most important element of communication, to say it again, is talking not only the right things, but also with the right market segment. One of the marketing gurus stated on the factor of communication that communication is something. It is an interactive dialogue, as a matter of fact, which takes place between the companies and the market during the pre-selling, the selling, the post-selling, the consuming, and the post-consuming stages. If we dissect this statement, we can develop a better understanding relating significance of communication. It takes place even before, you know, selling has taken place. You go to a supermarket, for example, and you take a look at the products. All the brands, they all look into your eyes, and you develop certain pictures in your mind, you develop certain images, and those images and pictures, I'm not talking about the image in the technical terms, which I talked about earlier. I'm talking, you see, as a plain English word. When you develop to see those images in your mind, uh, those reinforce the, what you already have in your mind in technical terms, uh, the brand image. And you pick to see you get one of those. Uh, so it, it has been a result. The, the, the purchase you know, that has taken place has been the result of a communication which has taken place uh, before you know, selling uh, could take place. Uh, communication takes place you know, when you are buying it, actually buying it, and it, take, it takes place when you have bought it. And uh, that communication is in the form of advertising, for example. That communication is in the form of promotions. And uh, the advertising and promotions in take so many different forms and shapes, which you know the intention here is not to go into those details. Communication also takes place uh, during the, the consumption process. When you are consuming a product, um, you again develop certain the pictures. Either you see it reinforces the image you already have, and you, you, you tell yourself, yes, I have taken the rightmost decision. This is the brand which really is worth its salt, and it really suits me. And it also projects my own image in my own eyes, and it also projects my image in the eyes of those you know, I, I socialize with. If it is a brand, you see, which is a consumer durable, for example, a car, for example, or a motorbike, for example, or a wristwatch, for example. So. Communication takes place even after the, 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 the selling has taken place. Uh, even after you see that you have consumed a product, uh, if we are talking about um, a consumer consumable, and uh, communication keeps taking place uh, at all stages, meaning after you have consumed it, after you have used it, and it is an ongoing process. And that is why companies uh, do. Uh, communicate with consumers from time to time, and there's a talk, you know, within the companies. Hey, listen, uh, now is the time to start um, talking with the market again. Let us launch another campaign. Um, let us let us uh, get the kick off uh, get another promotional campaign. So uh, the reason, you know, people talk about uh, this iterative process, which takes place in iteration, you know. Uh, because you need to talk with the market um, at intervals with, with a certain frequency. Otherwise, market tends to forget. Awareness um, goes at a lower level. Uh, your presence is not felt. Somebody else is creating a lot of noise, what we talked about earlier. And not only that that noise will create distortions, it will um, take over whatever you know, we have been saying and maybe 
it can uh, dislodge us in the minds of the consumers and weaken our position. So, in other words, while talking about communication, another important thing which has come to the surface through this discussion is uh, that we have to look into those aspects of communication in addition to the frequency I was talking about, we have to look at those aspects of communication uh, which create the most uh, effective impressions on the minds of the consumers. And we also have to be um, aware, I would say the painfully aware of uh, uh, those factors which create uh, the negative impressions. As good brand managers, we have to differentiate between what creates good impressions and what creates negative impressions. If we really can differentiate between uh, the factors responsible for the two sets of impressions uh, of a job is done, and uh, we can uh, easily uh, summarize that uh, accurate and good communication uh, can be hardly overemphasized, and correct communication goes a long way in creating and establishing the right brand identity and brand image um, and uh, brand identity and uh, the image uh, being at the heart of uh, the brand management can have to be taken in their true light and could have to be created in the right most way. Uh, just to take you back to your um, uh, previous course uh, on marketing, which is uh, the fundamentals of marketing. Uh, let me uh, the, tell you the objectives of communication. Uh, no doubt we are clear about uh, the importance of communication uh, when it takes place between the sender and the receiver. Uh, the, what is it to see that the sender sends and what is it that the receiver should receive? Uh, the, we have talked about that, no question. But let me talk about the uh, the, the objectives uh, which are uh, at the heart of communication um, so that uh, we can be clear uh, what is it we should be talking about under one given set of circumstances. Um, number one objective of communication is to create awareness. You are selling a brand. It is a good brand in all respects. Um, it has good features, very good benefits to offer. Uh, can create see, a lot of value for the company and uh, they give a lot of value to the consumer, but people are not really aware of its existence or the presence in the market. It does happen. It is not an exaggeration. Um, it does happen that people at times do not know that a good brand exists in the marketplace. So the first objective of communication is to create that awareness. Unless that awareness exists, there is no second step which leads consumers toward buying that product. So the second objective of communication after you have created awareness is to impart knowledge. There is a possibility that uh, your target market is aware of the existence of your brand, but they're not very knowledgeable about the benefits of that brand. So it is the job of the brand managers that they impart knowledge through communication. Um, what is it that the product does? I will give you an example of pharmaceuticals. Uh, before the product is launched, the effort is underway by the marketing and sales people uh, to impart knowledge to those who really matter. I mean, not the real buyers, but the influencers, people who are behind decision-making process, meaning doctors. We shall talk about, you know, who the buyers are and who are the influencers and uh, uh, what is the role played by the influencers in the uh, decision-making process uh, relating to the purchasing. Uh, but for the time being, the objective of communication is to uh, impart knowledge about the product uh, which um, is available on the market, uh, but people do not know about that. After having fulfilled that objective, the third one is to create preference for your brand. 
uh, when people are uh, aware of the product and uh, they are knowledgeable, uh, they should go to the market and buy it. Uh, so the objective of communication here um, is to create that preference uh, with the help of talking about the product features and the extra benefits or the differentiated uh, the features which it offers to the target market. If you can talk about that very effectively, you have done your job and uh, that job uh, falls within the domain of rightmost communication and uh, we talked about that earlier. The fourth objective of communication is to ensure that purchase takes place. Of course, we cannot control the market or we cannot order the people into buying, uh, but we really uh, can create conditions which are conducive uh, for consumers to go and buy. And uh, this objective is the combination or it is the net result rather of uh, all the three objectives which I talked about earlier and uh, therefore hinges upon uh, the successive achievement of uh, the earlier three objectives um, in order to be helpful for the product and uh, in order to uh, trigger the final purchasing mechanism. Having had an understanding of the three models, that is brand identity, brand image, and brand communication, we are all set to start talking about the brand fundamentals. Fundamental number one is brand dimensions. In order to talk about all these uh, the fundamentals, I will start with uh, a graphical presentation with the help of which I can better explain to you what the whole thing is all about. First of all, we have functions. What are the functions? What it means is what the brand is, what it does to consumers, and what is it meant for, and what are the features what is the need it satisfies? So, a clarity about functions of uh, the brand which you are introducing or which you are working on in order to maintain and sustain is one of the aspects of brand dimensions. Number two is differentiation. We're moving counterclockwise, and differentiation, as the terminology suggests, is all about different features. We are living in an age where competition is not between good products and bad products. Competition is between excellent products. Most of the products that are available on the market are really excellent. So when you compare products, one brand versus another, it becomes difficult for one company to surpass the other. I mean, it is all right in saying that we have to have differentiated features, but in order to create those differentiated features, it takes quite a lot of effort. So this aspect of brand dimensions deals with the area of differentiation. In order to excel in an age where all products, like I said earlier, excellent, we still have to create differentiation because we have to find room somehow or the other. Otherwise, we just cannot go ahead with our objectives of brand management and follow the right direction. Third aspect of uh, brand dimensions is the source company. The source company takes a lot of importance in the sense that past history, reputation of the company, its present practices, its relationships with members of the trade, and its relationships with customers and consumers, uh, especially if it is a service selling company, restaurants, for example, all these factors are very important. And uh, consumers do care about all these factors. When a brand carries the name of a company with good reputation, quite a lot of marketing is taken care of then and there because people think to themselves that this company has the reputation of creating, introducing, and sustaining good products. Chances are this product or this brand also is going to be good. It plays a very significant role. The fourth aspect of 
brand dimensions is brand personality. And that is all about brand identity and brand image. And after having talked about the models earlier, I don't see any further need for explanation uh, as to what those the models are. So having developed an understanding of these four aspects with the help of uh, the slide that you have just looked at, uh, we can easily understand and appreciate the uh, first fundamental of uh, the brand management, which is brand dimensions. What is very important about dimensions is, in addition to the aspects that I've talked about, in addition to the aspects that I've shown you with the help of the slide, consistency among all those aspects. They've got to be consistent in order to create a brand which really appeals to the target market. If there is no consistency between the four aspects, the brand is not going to be very coherent. It is not going to be very uh, meaningful. And the communication is going to be lopsided. When communication is lopsided, it automatically means it is not very accurate. And that is what Sigurdar talked about earlier. Communication has got to be accurate to the target market so that they can conjure up the uh, the best possible image of your brand. And, you know, you will be compromising the brand identity or, in other words, your consumers will not have the right image in their minds if there is something wrong within the four aspects of the brand dimensions. If they are lopsided, if they're not very coherent, if they're not very cogent, if they're not very compatible with, it, with each other, so compatibility is another name which we can give to um, these four aspects which have got to be compatible and consistent. Uh, the more consistent they are, the stronger the brand identity is. That is the basic rule. And any weak dimension will render the brand effort lopsided. Today's lecture and the next lecture are going to be about the brand fundamentals. Today we have talked about just one fundamental, which is brand dimensions. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the remaining three uh, fundamentals, which I pointed out earlier when I started off this lecture. And uh, to wrap up my discussion about uh, uh, the basics that we have to know before we start undertaking all topics of brand management one by one. Um, in other words, what I'm saying is that I'm still in the process of uh, explaining to you the, uh, the basic, the building blocks, or the basic uh, the understanding of all those macros um, uh, which you could have to know um, before we uh, could enter uh, the phase of uh, details. Uh, because uh, when we talk about positioning, for example, uh, I'll be talking about brand image and brand identity. And if you don't know what image is and how it is created and what is the role of communication between creating brand identity and, the, and, and brand image, you cannot really understand and appreciate the whole concept in its entirety. So the, the phase of, um, I would say, the first phase of uh, the building blocks will come to an end in the next lecture, which is going to be lecture number four, and uh, to recap, you know, whatever we have discussed so far, uh, let me state three basic models which uh, are uh, a prerequisite um, before we start understanding the brand fundamentals are the brand identity, the brand image, and uh, the brand communication. Um, we understand the importance of all of these um, in their uh, respective uh, shapes and forms. And uh, we have understood uh, how they come into play uh, when um, they made use of in an integrated and, and coherent way. We understand the, object, the objective which we want to fulfill uh, by bringing these models into play. And uh, we understand how that fits into the overall uh, brand management process, the definition of which 
not the whole process, the definition of which we discussed in the last lecture and recapped in the beginning of this lecture and uh, block by block and concept by concept, I am very confident that we are going to develop uh, a very clear understanding.